Hey, this is Matt. Hello, this is Matt. Hey, Coach. It's Chuck Sullivan at the conference office. We just uh, just did your intro. We mentioned that one and zero overall with a big win at Vanderbilt, thirty-seven to seven. Back at uh, return to uh, open the season at home. Open the the home portion of your schedule this Saturday against Navy, one p.m. Eastern time on ESPN three. And if you would just take a minute to tie up the uh, the win against Vanderbilt and then tell us what you expect to see at home uh, against Navy on Saturday, please. Uh, excuse me for being late, but thank you, uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, obviously we're excited to get to get the first win of the year to go down and represent the American Conference, uh, get a win over an SEC team, uh, a tremendous team with a with a good coach in Derek Mason. So uh, we were happy about our kids. They handled adversity well. They handled the lightning delay well. They handled the heat and the conditions well. And uh, now we turn our attention to uh, a future conference member in Navy, a team that we have a long history with, a lot of respect for. Uh, won nine games last year. Our team sat here and watched them play Ohio State and, and really outplay Ohio State till the very end. And uh, uh, we we know that we have certainly have a work cut out for us trying to defend the triple option, trying to defend Keenan Reynolds, and trying to find a way to move the ball against that defense, which really held Ohio State in check for most of the game. So uh, with that, we uh, look forward to this week. We have some injuries. But most of our safeties didn't practice today. A couple wideouts were out today. So uh, Vanderbilt certainly uh, – um, you know, took a little bit of a toll on us in terms of uh, injuries. So uh, some guys are going to have to step up and be ready to go. So with that, let's see if anybody has any questions. Take okay, questions for Coach Rule, please. Star 1 on your telephone to join the queue, then the operator will introduce you. And we'll go to John Mitchell with Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, John, how you doing, man? Good, man. Good. Congratulations on the win this week. Thank you very much. Uh, talk about that triple option. Um, is, is there anything similar to what you guys saw against Army last year? Or is, 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 and how do you go about you know, game planning for that? Well, you know, uh, uh, I think it, it's similar to what the, you know, Army did, but they just do it at a really, really high level. You know, they had 370 yards rushing against Ohio State. It starts with their quarterback. They have a really, really physical offensive line, um, much bigger than anything we saw last year. Um, really disciplined. The quarterback can throw it and run it, uh, but all, all the backs are physical. Their fullbacks are physical. So, you know, they, they've just taken the option and they've, they've really mastered it and perfected it. They do it at, at a much higher level than anything we've seen. So, we have to try our best to replicate it in practice. Um, you know, we, uh, we 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 have to try to do a good job with our kids of, of giving them as fast a look as we can give them, and then hope it gets them ready for Saturday. Yeah, and also, you know, you, you guys had all the takeaways on uh, in, in Saturday's and Friday's game. I'm sorry, Thursday's game. <clears throat> and this is the team that is really, really protective of the ball. Just talk about the importance of the turnovers and how, you know, you can possibly use that as momentum moving forward uh, from, a, from a defensive standpoint. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, any time that you can win the turnover margin, you increase your chances of winning. So uh, that, that's twofold for us. Number one, it's, it's us protecting the ball. I thought PJ did a good job of protecting the ball. Uh, our backs did. We we had the one issue on the punt, um, and then you know we're always trying to get the ball out. You know we're always trying to find ways to strip balls, and and you know a lot of those turnovers on Saturday happened really at the end of the game. You know they weren't really in the kind of in the flow of the game. A lot of those were sort of in the third and fourth quarters uh, after the game had pretty much been decided. But but uh, I think it you know it, it it'll make it'll be really important for us to have to have a chance to even have a chance against Navy to um, to to find a way to maybe get the ball out and certainly protect the football. One more question, Matt. Any, on the injuries, is anybody, has anybody been ruled out already for the game? Yeah, Alex Wells won't play. Uh, Nate L. Smith and Aboye will see if they can play. Um, Jalen Fitzpatrick, he, you know, you know, he, he, he didn't practice today. John Christopher, he didn't practice today. So uh, there's quite a few guys at those skill positions that, uh, as of right now, would not play. We'll have to see how they do it as the week goes on. Thanks, Matt. Sure, man. Thank you. We'll go next to John DeCarlo with Alscoop.com. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Hey, good, John. Thanks. Hey, can you, can you follow up on, on Alex's injury? I know you said he won't play. Is it is it pretty serious? Do you guys know what it is? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, uh, he's got a tear in his knee. You know, I, I don't, I don't know the, ex, you know, how the extent of it. You know, with it being the Labor Day weekend, you know, there's some things, you know, that we're trying, trying to get him in to be seen by people. But he'll be out for, you know, for several weeks, probably at least six weeks, if not this, you know, if not longer. How how tough of a loss is that for you guys? Because he was such an important recruit, and because of what he did in the spring and in the preseason, and even Thursday night to just kind of 
you know, help stabilize that, that back end for you. Hey, you know, uh, it's just one of those things we're going to have to you know, pick it up and keep moving forward. You know, the, the kids that came in after him, Will Hayes, Nadell Smith, uh, Pretlow, um, you know, boy, the, before he got hurt, those, those guys, you know, they, they, they played most of that game, and I thought they played pretty well on defense. So, you know, uh, we're, we're anxious to get Alex back, but, but, you know, the next guy has to step up now and, and be ready to play. Um, if, I know you said now, now Nate, uh, Nate L. Smith, you don't know if he'll play Saturday. What's his injury? Is it a knee thing, too? No, he, yeah, he's, got, he's got a leg, so, you know, his would have, uh, you know, if, if we were to play today, he wouldn't play. So we'll just have to wait and see, you know, him and a boy, we'll have to wait and see if, if either one of them can play. I'm, not sure, I'm really not sure, to be quite honest. Who would, your, who would your starting safeties be if you had to go with all those guys banged up? I mean, who would you, who would you put out there? Saturday? We finished the game with Will Hayes and Jihad Pretlow, and, and uh, we're confident in those guys. You know, Pretlow started a lot of games last year, and he played really well on uh, – he played really well on Thursday night, and Will Hayes played really well on Thursday night. So, um, you know, those guys would those guys would go in there, and they they'd um, you know they they play the whole game for us. Well, you had a chance to to go back and look at the film. You know, apart from the obvious guys, you know, who wh- what stood out to you, and who stood out to you in terms of guys that really really played well in your thing? I thought Avery Williams really played well uh, at, at Sam linebacker. He was really physical. Um, you know, really did a nice job of of really kind of you know playing at the point of attack. And then Praise Martin, you know, some of those guys in the D-line. I think, you know, at the end of the day, they, they really, that game really wasn't about turnovers to me. It was about our defensive line, you know, controlling the line of scrimmage and getting to the quarterback, uh, which really doesn't help us this week, you know. But, um, yeah, I felt like the defensive line really kind of took took control of the game. It might sound like an obvious question, but when, when you go through spring and when you go through preseason camp and you talk about the guys who have potential and who could do something for you, like Sharif Finch, like Matt Ioannidis, like praise, and then they go out and do it. Um, how, what does that do for the team when they see it's not just the coaches talking about it, it's the players talking about it, they actually go out and do it, and they do it well on the opener? How much of a boost does that give you guys? Well, I think, I think yeah, I mean, you know, to a, to a large degree, I think any time that you are believing in something and trying something, then you have some success at it, you know, it makes you believe in it more. And I think I, the thing I hope, the message I hope they get from me is, you know, you know they 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 are they're they're in charge of how they play. You know they're in charge of what they do. So through their preparation and effort and 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 you know what they put into it, they're in charge of the product on the field. The coaches aren't. They are. And so they they've you know when you see a guy like Ioannidis or Praise or Sharif who takes control of his career and says I want to be a great player and he works for it and plays it plays that way and then it happens for him. You know I'm excited for them. The last question for you: but With the running backs, I know Kenny's your starter, but when Jamie gets in there and Zaire gets in there. They they have an extra dimension and an extra burst. That did. It's just a little bit faster. Uh, I'm curious as to where things stand with Zaire because I know he. You said he was banged up a little bit in camp, and and when I talked to Marcus, he didn't make any bones about the fact that you know he was he thought he was pressing too much and that he needed to have a better camp. Um, I'm just curious as to where his mindset is and how he might respond because he's a guy who was you know, getting starting reps, and now he's third on the depth chart and didn't get in until late, and, and how you see things developing with him moving forward. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he's really, he's, he's fourth right now, and he's he, he's working, you know, he's trying to find roles and ways to play. Um, you know, I was I was pleased with Kenny. I thought he, uh, you know, he ran hard. We didn't really block great early on in the game, and he really protects well. He catches the ball in the backfield. He lets P.J., you know, he, Everyone talks about you know the things that PJ does, but he can't do those if Kenny's not in there picking up all the blitzes and twists and chips. And uh, you know Jamie got in there at the end when they you know they get a little bit more tired and he you know he has has a burst and but Jihad Thomas had some good runs. Um, you know I was really pleased with Jihad. I mean he he uh, he, he gives us uh, kind of a shifty dimension and, and and right now Zaire you know like I said he was a little bit banged up. He's just trying to fight for reps. So uh, he's had a good attitude in practice and he's worked hard. I've been very pleased with where he is uh, from a mental standpoint. Gotcha. Thanks, Matt. And we'll go next to Chris Franklin with Coach and Player Magazine. Good afternoon, Coach Wolf. Uh, just wanted to know uh, if you could describe how the secondary played on Thursday and uh, some of the improvements that they've made since the end of last season. Uh, you know, obviously we picked the ball off, which was great. You know, we, we, we I think we had one busted coverage that resulted in a – in a, a deeper play, which was just a kid not, you know, not locking in and getting the check. But I thought, you know, they they kept the ball in front of them, and and uh, they were able to, um, they were able to, 
um, you know, pick the pick off the balls were thrown to them. You know, Tavon had had the great pick. You know, to you know, which was I thought a nice play. But you know, for them to help us get some turnovers and you know limit the other teams, you know, deep balls. That that's that's really what we're looking for. So they've they've made some progress, and now they've got to you know do that, you know, for again on Saturday. In addition to defending the run and being those extra run defenders that we need them to be. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. And we'll go next to Ken Davis with KenDavisFiles.com. Coach, congratulations. Uh, just wondering, after you go through a, a long preseason and you're trying to get your team into a game day routine and everything, what was it like to uh, experience all the weather delays and the, the, the controversy over their jerseys and the, just a, a strange atmosphere down there for you with the conditions? What was what, yeah. Was it a big distraction or what? Well, you know, you know, with regards to the jerseys, they came over and said something about jerseys, and I, I said, I, I said, I don't care about their jerseys, you know, and I even told them, I said, please tell Coach Mason, I don't care, you know, so that, you know, their jerseys, meant, you know, means nothing to me, you know, so uh, whatever rule that is, that, that wasn't me doing that, you know, and uh, but, but with regards to the, the weather, that was certainly a little bit of a challenge, um, but our kids handled it well, and as we said to our kids, you know, that's that's guys, that's why we, uh, you know, practiced at 5:30 in the morning, and you know, in Camden all spring, you know, to be ready for these things, and so. I think at one point I walked in and told the guys, hey, the game's canceled, we're going home, and they all got dejected, and I said, well, all right, that's the worst case, and that hasn't happened yet, so now we're just going to push it back another hour. So, you know, it's like anything else in life, it can always get worse, you know, and you know, I think we saw Idaho, Florida, that got canceled. So our kids were just waiting around ready to play. I think it's a credit to who they are as people that, you know, they just wanted a chance to go compete, and uh, we waited it out. They had to wait it out, too. When we, when we got out there, we just warmed up for 20 minutes and, and went and played. You know? So uh, we just tried to turn it into a fun positive. Sure, everyone with your program was was probably disappointed, but most of the kids with uh, being picked eighth in the in the conference to go down and beat an SEC team in that fashion. Uh, what what does it mean for your program? Well, I just think it means for our kids that you know that that they won a game, which and hopefully they've learned last year that it's hard to win college football games. You know, I mean it's it's not easy. So you know we don't want to ever minimize it by just saying hey it's just one game. We don't ever want to overblow it by saying hey we've arrived. You know, for us it's just. Hey, we worked really, really hard. We found a way to win this game, and now our guys have to have the, you know, the courage to go out there and do that week after week. And so, you know, but if one thing that hopefully the last, you know, year and 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 game has taught them is there's no secret to winning. You know, I mean, if you don't do all the work, you can't win. You'll blow the game, and if you do all the work, at least you have a chance to win. And and uh, now we have to do that as we get ready for a really, really, really good Navy team. Thanks, Coach. Thank you for the time today. We look forward to talking to you again next Monday.